Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journal Cast on Landmark Papers and Surgery. I'm Madhuri Nagaraj, a general surgery resident from UT Southwestern, and I will be reviewing the North American Symptomatic Carotid Endarterectomy Trial, or NASIT, first published in 1991, with a surgical arm follow-up in 1999. The carotid endarterectomy, or CEA, procedure was introduced in 1954 as a means to prevent ipsilateral ischemic stroke, distal to known carotid artery disease and proceeded to increase sevenfold in the next few decades. This was despite initial trials with predominantly negative results in the context of new risk factor management studies and the emergence of antiplatelet agents. The NASA trial aimed to evaluate CEA efficacy in asymptomatic and symptomatic patients in randomized fashion alongside the already underway European carotid surgery trial. The first study was a randomized controlled trial published in 1991 and included patients with a history of TIA or non-disabling stroke within 120 days and excluded those with factors such as uncontrolled medical comorbidities or more severe intracranial lesions or previous ipsilateral CEA. All included participants were then categorized by degree of stenosis into a high-grade group representing 70 to 99% stenosis and a moderate grade group representing 30 to 69%. Both of these groups were then randomized into CEA with medical care or medical care alone. Medical care referred to treatment with an antiplatelet, often 1300 milligrams of aspirin, along with an antilipid, anti-diabetic, and antihypertensive as indicated. Patients were then followed up starting 30 days postoperatively or on date of discharge from the hospital and then every three to four months. Follow-ups were performed by blinded neurologists for events such as death or stroke and worked up accordingly. The time to treatment failure was used as the primary outcome. Analysis of the baseline patient characteristics of the following risk factors such as age, cerebrovascular event history, and comorbidities showed adequate randomization with balanced treatment groups. On February 1st, 1911, the trial early terminated the patients in the high-grade stenosis category of the study due to significant evidence in support of CEA. Of the 659 patients included in the analysis of the high-grade stenosis, 328 were randomized to CEA with medical care and 331 to medical care alone. At 30-day follow-up, the surgical arm had slightly higher complication risk than the medical arm. This, however, changed significantly at two-year follow-up when the surgical arm had only 9% risk of any ipsilateral stroke compared to 26% in the medical arm. This was an absolute risk reduction of 17% and a number needed to treat of six patients to prevent stroke at two years. The treatment groups did not differ significantly in total mortality. In fact, when examining Kaplan-Meier survival curves for the various events, the early disadvantage to surgical treatment was overcome when the line crossed at three months with persistent surgical benefits shown at 30 month follow-up. This was true for all six of their major endpoints. When examining stroke risk at two years by the number of risk factors, there was a clear rise in risk with number of risk factors in the medical arm from 17% in low risk to 23% in moderate risk and 39% in high risk patients. In the surgical arm, however, the prognosis did not vary significantly and averaged 9% in all patients. A secondary analysis of risk of stroke at two years of CEA by degree of carotid artery stenosis showed that the absolute risk reduction increased as the degree of stenosis increased. The NASA trial thus concluded that symptomatic high-grade stenosis patients had an absolute risk reduction of 17% at two years of stroke or death and that the gains increased as the degree of stenosis increased. This gave cause to halt the trial early in that group. However, no conclusive evidence was determined for moderate grade stenosis patients. Generalizability was cautioned based on their strict choice in surgeon, determination of stenosis, and recency of disease in their included patients. In their 1999 follow-up evaluation of all surgical arm patients, the NASA trial aimed to establish the durability of CEA repair. They followed 1,415 of the patients randomized to the surgical arm, including both high-grade and moderate-grade stenosis. Surgeons were allowed to perform whichever technique they preferred in regards to anesthesia, shunting, heparinization, and reversal. In the immediate perioperative period, 
6.5% had a risk of an event defined as stroke or death. 2.9% were major disabling events, which persisted at 2% at 90 days. Of note, there were no differences between high-grade or moderate-grade stenosis groups. Of the events, most were thromboembolic in nature, 89 were in the ipsilateral territory, and the vast majority occurred either intraoperatively or within the first 24 hours. The follow-up trial also identified some baseline variables predictive of increased surgical risk, such as contralateral carotid occlusion and ipsilateral ischemic disease, as well as reduced surgical risk of treated coronary artery disease. Some of these, they freely admit, have unknown significance in practice. Ultimately, at eight years follow-up, there was only a 5.7 risk of disabling stroke or death, leading the NASA team to conclude that CEA is safe in the perioperative period and long-term at preventing recurrent ipsilateral stroke and ischemia in experienced surgical hands. So the take-home message is that the 1991 trial showed that in high-grade stenosis patients, with or without symptoms, CEA was protective with an absolute risk reduction of 17%, and the benefits outweighed the perioperative risks at three months. The 1999 surgical arm follow-up then showed that CEA is a durable procedure, reducing the risk of disabling stroke or death to only 5.7% at eight years. This was Madhuri Nagraj again. Thank you for listening, and feel free to email me with any questions or comments.